Now let's thrust ever deeper into the agenda that Peter B and his Labour Party team have rolled out, an agenda that insists that the current situation in Nigeria approaches a national emergency. Mr B says it's an agenda for all sectors, one that promises to retool governance and secure a robust, united Nigeria for the Nigerian people, a document of reassurance that he hopes many will put their faith in on the expectation that they won't end up counting the cost of that faith. So, a covenant of sorts then, an agreement and a guarantee of performance, if only the Nigerian people would vote him in as their next president. It opens with a salute to the youth of Nigeria, who he says have given momentum to his journey to rescue this country. And there is expectedly a passionate appeal for them to remain resilient and stay the course. And then he rounds on the impunity of those he says have perfected the dubious act of state capture. So what should we make of it all? Well, for a deeper assessment, I'm joined now in the studio by O.K. Ikechuku, Professor of Strategic Management and Human Capital Development, Executive Director of Development Specs Academy and member of the editorial board of This Day newspaper, and by Tope Fashua, who is an economist and public policy scholar, and I have to say, who supports Bola Ahmed Tinubu of the APC. Thank you very much indeed to both of you for coming in. Let me start with you, uh, Professor Ike Chuku. Are you impressed or encouraged by Mr. B's agenda, which has just been rolled out? It's a sort of mini plan for economic growth, but that growth, growth tied to critical priority areas such as security power and all the rest of it. Well, I would rather say that there are aspects of the uh, world has been rolled out that suggests the kind of thing one would expect mm. to find in this kind of presentation. For one thing, um, this is the first time I'm seeing anybody, the, the gentleman from Labour Party just left, establishing a linkage between the party manifesto, stakeholders, and the document they've put out. If you recall in 2019, one of the strongest criticisms I, I gave to the article document at that time was that it had nothing to do with the manifesto of the PDP, with the history of the party, with his own history as former vice president. Mm. The people just sat down and read it. So that's a good point, that uh, it's presumably the result of some kind of consensus, that is one. Two, that the document is not being presented as um, an ultimate solution, but a roadmap. That's another positive. The other thing, of course, is that you find that in, in, some, in the details, there are issues raised. They give hope, but they also create concern. They've already spoken of a much larger document. I hope those concerns are contained therein because any document could be mistaken for what you might call a statement of good intentions. Mm. The, the crisis, the movement from statement of good intentions to a working strategy document is what will make the difference. Now, if that's a summary, whereas it's reassuring in that it has actually broken down areas of, you know, key performance indicators, if you like, it has not created a certain dimension aspect of a holistic template. So probably the migration of content from the larger document to the executive summary, maybe they will need a little more attention to it. The other, th the other thing, of course, is that when also when you take it holistically and look at the summary, take, for instance, the section on power. Hmm. Now, you see, you're now talking executive communication by a leader. And usually as elections approach, the communication of a party begins to adapt itself to the perceived communication mode of the, of the candidate. If you read that section, you can link it either with Labour itself or with, party, with P Peter. Now, that short narrative about uh, distribu distributors of power, the problem is supply. Peter B will say, the man who is selling pepper, who wants to start grinding pepper, he has, he has money for pepper machine. He doesn't have to buy a generator. That's what I want to do. Now, they need to move into that mode of communication mm. within the party. It's conspicuously missing in that document, valuable as it is. So the two reassuring things is that, look, they say there's a consensus. It's linked to the party manifesto. Unlike what has become the norm in the last 20 years, where I win an election, I call consultants, 
quote unquote, they come with a computer, they sit down, they tell me that we should create a thousand jobs, that that will be good for the economy. They are not telling me that based on the challenges of the operating environment, this is the only amount. I'll just give a, a typical example. Mm -hmm. Going back to that document I mentioned earlier. There was some talk, not the, uh, the, the PDP then, uh, you know, about how much will increase in food, food production, among other things. Now, the network of the ecosystem for making that happen was totally ignored. Namely, you're talking about increased famine, but within the period under review, X number of dams have been built all over the country. The total volume of water going down the country has gone down by 68%, so you can't do any farming. Fishing and the crab farming have all disappeared. And you're presenting a strategy document that people went to write for you in Dubai. <laughs> Fortunately, <laughs> that's not what's happening right. here. So it's a relief to me right. that there's some measure of realism in the document they're putting forward. Okay. We'll get to the challenges in, right. in some detail later. Okay, well, let's turn to you, Top 8 um, Fashua. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Um, putting on your economic hat and your analysis um, sort of template in your head. Uh, th this is a sort of synopsis, yeah, I mean, okay. a, a cut down version of a bigger plan. Absolutely. What do you make of it? Yeah, um, I, I think it's good that we are beginning to get some traction in mm. terms of um, candidates putting their policy ideas forward and um, in more granular details. And like you rightly observed this, well, it, when I read the, the document or the, the statement, it didn't quite sound to me like um, like 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 um, like a manifesto document, mm. per se. But maybe um, I understand that it spoke somewhere in the U.S. and mm. put this out. Um, perhaps it was just trying to structure uh, its ideas more along sectoral lines, you know. <clears throat> and um, of course, there's still going to be that um, that that clash between. Uh, Peter will be the person mm. and the presidential candidate and the party on which is running. Now, for example, um, if he says on education, like he has said, he wants to assure 14% of the budget goes to education. Yeah, Labour wants to hear something like that. Mm. But in the, in the next turn, it talks about, listen, I have to remove subsidy and uh, we have to privatize transmission of and power. And Labour doesn't like They that, don't do want to hear that, you know. Right. So... Uh, so um, they want to, uh, he wants to privatize transmission of power. He believes that that's, the, um, that's where we're dropping the ball, mm. you know, and all of that. Would well, they want to hear that, you know? Because, again, when you look at that, and, and, and sometimes I felt that the, uh, the statement was also coming from um, an angle of, you know, s things that sound popular. Um, for example, it's popular to say that because we haven't actually uh, privatized transmission, that's why we still have some problems. But is it really so? Because if you look at the Jenkos and the Discos that were privatized, the government has had to bail them out with mm. more than a trillion naira. That's a good and point. And we still have a lot of problems. And secondly, mm. perhaps more importantly, is can the average suffering Nigerian afford what they call the um, cost-reflective tariff of private sector companies. Imagine if it was all private sector companies that, were, that had dominated everything. And, you know, and, and they said, listen, we need to make our profit. Mm. And when you go down to the villages, they can't, they can't, they can't afford to pay. Mm. I mean, I, in my house where I live in Abuja, I pay over 100, 120,000 naira every month for electricity but then you've got a big fat house I, I don't <laughs> just a moderate house really you know but i think we were categorized in one of them top a whatever stuff yeah. you know. i mean it's and not quite it, the it, same it, as someone it, living it, in it, a it, village it's not quite know? the same but yeah. you know even if you're going to take it easy with those guys they probably would pay Twenty thousand, thirty thousand naira, mm. which is still which prohibitive. Is, which is prohibitive. Yeah. So Let, I mean, those are some of the things. So I saw. I mean, across, um, he needs. He wants to. He's talking about. He talked about inflation. How he wants to um, tackle inflation, but then it dovetailed to food inflation mm. alone. Yes, whereas food inflation is the usually one of the biggest drivers of inflation. The last one was 23% and so on. Uh, but it's not the only component of inflation. So you would have uh, thought, okay, fine. You, you would also, when you're talking about inflation, you have to talk about the other component, you mm. know, uh, imported inflation, what's going on with the, with the Naira exchange rate, you know, how can... And then when he talked about uh, agriculture, he talked about food exports. So should we be talking... I started to think, okay, listen, you know, now maybe I put it this way... Um, 
He told me, well, I mean, um, sometimes I don't like to talk about the three major. You know, I think mm. it kind of gives them a certain advantage um, over some other guys also have good ideas, yes. SDP and co. Well, actually, yes, you know, you're, you're some right. Good I mean, ideas, I, I you thought know? the yeah. SDP, the YPP, I mean, their candidates oh, have very YPP. good ideas. YPP, uh, it yeah. has good ideas, yeah. you know, uh, maybe ADC as well, you know, so, yeah. uh, but, but we want to hear, we really want to hear out of the box ideas mm. from some of the younger guys that are coming on board, not the usual stuff, you mm. know, okay, um, on food, on our Greek, we're going to uh, ensure food export. We don't need food export. And from that point in time, we're not, we're not, we don't need food export. We need to begin to add value to things, okay? Because, I mean, we've been doing all the food export mm. uh, for too long. And then from that point on, we, he moved over to talk about the fourth industrial revolution. And I'm wondering, okay, where's that from? It sounds, it sounds a bit cliched. It sounds, you know, like something, you know, you want to sound a bit you know, like intelligent and so on. And, uh, because what's the fourth industrial revolution? In fact, as we speak now, um, in, in those circles, they're talking about the seventh industrial revolution. So whereas the first industrial revolution driven by steam, uh, the second driven by Yeah, but you're talking about the Nigerian the third, context. Exactly. Perhaps you're not, you're when, I, when, I, when I think it. about it, yeah. when I looked at it within the context of Nigeria, Perhaps we should be going to our own first industrial revolution <laughs> where we can actually produce the things that we use. Yeah. Okay? Because the first industrial revolution was about mass production, but they discovered the steam engine and all of that, and they could produce en masse mm. and push the rest of the world. And then, of course, it was later electricity came, and they could even do more. Mm. And then the internet came, and then you could sell a lot more. You know, but and, that's a different and, thing. And, and, you know, so, but the fourth industrial revolution, yeah. as said, is actually about robotization. And so, if we're talking about food export on this side, and we're moving on, you know, zero to a hundred in a second mm. to talk about the fourth industrial revolution because it sounds nice. Perhaps you're talking about the fifth <laughs> industrial revolution, which talks mm. about which talks about um, you know internet of everything, mm. internet of everything. Yeah, but and, I, I, and, you I know, need to, and so on bring, and so forth. So prof in. it's a, it's a bit it's a yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I understand know, the point you're all making. All over the board. It's a good it's a good trial, really. But, but, it's a good attempt. Yeah, I understand right? the point you're making, but prof, my interpretation, which may well be wrong or, or simplistic is that when he talks about things like that industrialization and so on, he, he's presuming that we're not going back to the 17th or 18th century, that you've already got the internet, you've already got electricity, you've already got the, the agriculture and so on, and all you've got to do is maybe expand the value chain and so on and so forth. I wonder what your thoughts are on that, and also on the electricity he was talking about. And the fact that, you know, if you put electricity in, it's going to be prohibitive for villagers and so on. And, and I, I imagine that most Nigerians would say, well, let's just get the electricity first and then worry about the bill. Yeah, because uh, the question of uh, the thing being prohibitive is open to argument. Mm. First, it's not available in many places. Where it's available, people are paying whatever rates there are. And uh, we can take it for granted that privatization will necessarily and mandatorily translate into extremely mm. high costs. But before I go on along with that, on the matter of uh, food export, what I want to understand is that we are talking about, there's nothing wrong with food export. I think there are three components in that conversation, the way I understand it. Food sufficiency, food export, mm. adding value to agricultural products. Three, in a chain. But number one must come first. And that's why I think you find in that document where he spoke about the impact of insecurity on productivity. And where, insec where insecurity undermines productivity, mm. you will not have food sufficiency. Um, exports will not come. When factories are shut down, like the multi-million multi dollar uh, tomato, this thing, you know the story. All the staff lost their jobs over a thousand. The expatriates managed to escape. So all of that impact negatively. But coming round to the overall um, perception mm. along the lines of what you're saying, let's pick out a few things. As we stand today, there is a consensus on the need for Nigeria to be better governed. And for us to have leaders who are competent, not advertised as competent, but who, have comp who are competent, who have track record of performance, but who must use a political platform in order to get on that platform. There are also a lot of young people who don't have the leverage of age, connections, and money to advertise sufficiently. And I believe they need as much space. The other point is that we must not assume that it's a P2B is only an anchor for a certain perception and set of reactions. 
if it had been found elsewhere, that's it where it will be. So that's why we need to wind down on the P2B concept as a person, mm. but on the concerns of the nation, which they've anchored on attributes they find in him. Thirdly, the Labour Party must already begin now, because each party, once you're contesting, begin to think of how to form a government. All the parties, they must begin to look at their challenges. Mm. Now, all that support you're talking about, there's nothing wrong with it. But how much of it is regulated? How much of it are you warehousing? It's all right for you to, for me to celebrate the fact that, oh, I ought to spend money to entertain um, Aniagolo and uh, um, Tokwe here, but they like me so much they are spending money. It may not go on forever. So there's the need for group discipline, greater streamlining of activities. They need to also improve all their internal communication, which has been a lot of complaint. This program cannot be PDM. Labour Party should run its program and suffer its headaches. My concern is that I want a country that will be well governed so that I do the sort of things I do without too much headache, without insecurity, with greater efficiency. So as it is, oh, it's all over the place. People are excited. Are you grooming the youth for orderly conduct post-elections? Are they, are, are they being made to understand processes? That there are ways of doing things? Like, sorry, a bit of a digression. The NSAS till tomorrow was considered a success story. But that's because most of those celebrating it did not realize it was not Nigerian youths. It was elite Nigerian youths. Part of their lunch included pizza. One <laughs> piece of pizza was 4,000 something. That's a pot of soup for three like days in Mushi. Tope li likes pizza. Yeah, <laughs> probably it was all supply. <laughs> My friend, I don't actually. <laughs> you know, but so no, I'm just kidding. Kidding. yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you then find that whereas it was a good indication of dissatisfaction, total dissatisfaction was an outrage. Very few people, to, very few people took cognizance of the fact that you wouldn't have gone anywhere with it. Imagine that seven yeah, but, but all revolutions, I don't mean to interrupt mm. you, are always anchored on philosophy and intellectuals. They, and they, they create the environment precisely. and guide that. Yes, but they? when that eruption occurs mm. and you don't have an overarching umbrella to use it to harness yes you're gone like mm. oh we part of what was celebrated then was the arab spring and my mm. question to them then was where are the countries that the yeah. spring took place so you see that if the labor party is already getting a lot of mass traction mm. this is the time to begin some kind of disaggregation to move from excitement to structure to move from you know um what do you call it um crowd psychology to distillation of capacities that's that you're the noisiest. Point. Oh, this man loves me so much. Mm. I'm so happy. You forget that in the event that I land, he may be the one who thinks he has a right to walk up to me in the podium and say, ah, oh boy, we remember we put you there. Yeah. That level of discipline must occur. Yes. Within the structure itself, the structure, I may be mistaken, I'm not seeing its vitality. Mm. That needs to happen because you can't have this amount of endorsement and all you see is people running up and down. Mm. It's wonderful that Nigerians have woken up to the fact that, look, we want change. And we see that change in this form. Reject the personalization, focus on the desire, which is good governance, responsible leadership, a nation that works. Mm. Beyond that, begin now a kind of subtle orientation so that people understand that there are structures and methods and processes in mm. all things. It's our party. But we all cannot be spokespersons. Let's also suppose we've had 10 rallies in different locations. Now, the organizers of the 10 rallies, are they in touch with each other? Are they meeting to create a consensus? Are they creating a common message that will become the theme? Mm. Are they, some of them being unduly repetitive, especially at the top of the party? You see, that's what I want a good country. Yeah, that's a very good point. You know. let, let me bring you in, uh, Mr. Fashu, uh, because... Um, th this, to some extent, hits the, the, the same point that Rina Omokri was making, uh, which is that rallies tend to excite the base, but they don't expand the base. Yeah. And so, I mean, I, I wonder what you think of that in the context of what Professor Ikejuku was just saying, and in the context of running and he basically trying to get those people to become not only more disciplined, but to actually be able to go beyond running around on the streets and to more tangible things like like voting and so on and, and how big a spread it actually is right um i think professor ikechuku has given them um some very good advice you mm. know if, if they will take it uh, of course what usually happens in such 
if you like, call it an organic, um, um, you know, uprising, mm. if you use that word, is oftentimes the messaging is all over the place. And we saw that again with, with, with NTAS, you know, at some point, we, some of us who were a bit older were trying to say, listen, let's have a direction. Where's this going? Mm. When is this going to end? It was a case of, you know, let's just create a nuisance. Let's block the roads. And if ambulances were coming, remember it was in COVID, and a lot of people, a few people died in the ambulances, mm -hmm. and mothers couldn't get to the hospital because we just wanted to make a point. And then they said, well, they've been suffering under the politicians for so long. Let them suffer a little bit more. And, and so, like they say, um, every revolution also creates its own new oppressors as mm -hmm. well. So it's something yes. we have to be careful, that, that is very careful true. about. In, in this case now, I'm, I got worried at some point. I felt that, look, um, there's some sort of mobocracy going on, the rule of the mob. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and I've had courses that I've had <laughs> run-ins with them online, you know, just mm -hmm. maybe for expressing an opinion. Uh, yesterday was about Jacques Silva showing up yes, I saw somewhere. That. And, I, I and, saw you know, of some, of the, yeah. some of the comments were really, I mean, uh, so maybe... You're quite offensive. No, maybe, honest, yeah. maybe, maybe because like many that. of these young people are, are, are many, many of these people are young, that they don't have that much experience. Mm -hmm. But again, that's a phenomenon that's going on all over the world and especially in Nigeria. When we were growing up, when we were 17, 18, 20, mm. the best we could do was maybe if you were strong, you joined the student union in university. And so your area of, inf your sphere of influence was rather small. Mm. It was you and your friends. But now we have 18 years old with 20 million followers, maybe just for being nuisance on social media. <laughs> And, and however, that's a leader, you mm -hmm. know. And so those are the people that they look up to when they send a tweet, you know, 200,000 people are retweeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, uh, some of us who are, you know, well, I'm not quite the intellectual, maybe people like uh, Prof here, would not think that he needs to be in competition with those kind of people mm -hmm. in terms of getting the crowd. Sometimes I wonder why uh, people follow people. But oftentimes they follow you to take you down as well, mm. you know, so they, they follow you and then one day you disagree with them and then they say that they're dragging you mm. and they can, you know, because there's a lot of anonymity online. So now this is the crowd following Pitalbi and to a large extent, sometimes you'd wonder who's leading who. In fact, the other time he asked them to please slow down on, mm. you know, some of these words and this thing that they do. And right. They, and they told him basically okay. to shut up, you know, that look. They're just using, they say, listen, you just be there. Go there to the TV. Let's do our thing. So I, I think it's, it's all, 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 many times in Nigeria, you they take things as a joke. But this is serious business. This is politics. This is, we're trying to put in a precedent in place. Right. And, of course, we're going to be looking at issues of content and, and what have you, you know. But right. I, I, okay. I will say from where I'm coming from right. that I hope they don't win. But, you know, but, <laughs> but it's, a, it's a good run. It's a, it's, it's a good run if they could redefine a few things yeah. and, you know, redefine a few things and get people more serious. Um, and, and then I hope they learn also that, look, I think you'd attract me more. Me, you'd mm. attract me more if you spoke to me in a good way and let me see the logic of what you have to sell mm. than you tell me that I'm stupid for not thinking like yeah. you. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think it's fair to say, Prof, that, I mean, those people may not necessarily represent every single person who's supporting uh, uh, yeah, they uh, don't, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Labour uh, Party. Uh, yes, I would like to, uh, yes, I agree, yeah. but a few points uh, in addition. Number mm. one, Following. People are following Tokpe, people are following me. Where mm. are we going today? They're following exactly. us. <laughs> That's an unanswered <laughs> question. Secondly, if you think back to 2019, by social media, Twitter, and all the other handles mm. on the planet and beyond the planet, Saraki had won mm. the primaries. Mm. They forgot that it's a delegate election where all that talk has no relevance whatsoever. Saraki got to Port Court, he was placed on the table, trashed and ask to be of good behavior. <laughs> now, you move it to this, opportunistic mischief arises in debates where I like you, and because of that, even though you're not in touch with me, I go around insulting people. So mm -hmm. we can't afford to take that too seriously. Because you must ask yourself, what's the disposition of the man they are working for? No, that's not how he behaves. Think back to 19, was it uh, 59 or? Mm. Zeke's movement, Zeke had to publicly 
tell off the leaders of the movement and the movement itself that this cannot work for Nigeria. If you respect me, stop all, all this nonsense. So I established no link whatsoever. Hmm. Like those, sometimes they say it's Igbo. What nonsense. What, how has Peter fed in the Southeast in all his political career since he says to be governor? So it's delusional to think he has an ethic. I recall when Sam wrote something, you remember the very what, obituary. Mm. Mm. Oh, a lot of people got excited. Some even called me, oh, ah, ah, what are you, they need to deal with Sam. I said, over what? Because he expressed an opinion and you're calling me because I'm from the Southeast. Mm. I cannot do that because my intervention has to be magisterial and fair. Absolutely. Yes, we need a good Absolutely. leader in this country. Mm. That person may be P2B, he may be Tokwe, he may be Chasa Nyagolu, but we need a good leader yeah, yeah, who has yeah. the right paradigms. Yeah. So going back to the issues relating to some of the details being mm. referred to, election is voting that will make a president. Now, based on the information from my neck, and also in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Mahmoud, who is the chairman, if the, what they put on the table works, there is no way you can rig, mm. since it's the beavers that will deliver the final outcome. Mm. There's also been this thing circulating in the so social media or how, of how they already some printing um, ballot papers, I'm sure you've seen it, and stuffing it in ballot boxes in anticipation. Since it's not the ballot papers, but what's on the beavers that I know will recognize, that sense of panic may be a challenge. Hmm. Thirdly, and to close on this one, now, the assumption, the, the whole idea about structure, what I've been a, a, a returning, um, what do you call it, um, a presiding officer, you're there, there has to be party representatives. So if your party is not represented, you're in danger. But that's because it's the ballot. Mm. In my own case, unfortunately, it was the Babangida um, election, the two-party thing. They had settled the representatives of NRC to have that anything I signed was okay. Now I was the only trouble in the polling booth. They said, what's your problem? Is my party. I said, give them. The. I said, I will not. <laughs> I signed the actual number. I was about to be lynched. Fortunately, the police <laughs> patrol kept. Yes. Right. So now, they, 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 I mean, so it's not funny, but it's funny. Serious you, you matter, because if that police hadn't come around, yeah. I don't know whether this interview will be taking place. Oh, so I'm glad they did. <laughs> <laughs> so taking it also to the mistaken assumption of those mm. who say, oh, you know, you have zero or very low internet penetration in the north. Therefore, it will not, um, what do you call it? Therefore, the voting will not affect. It right. may be true. But supposing this narrative gets spread, because the greatest problem I think the APC and the PDP have is that we have a long time for campaign. All the big parties have been used to what I call political burglary, mm. whereby primaries take place in two or three months, there's a president, not anymore. Now you have ten, eight months, now it's five remaining, and you're not used to being explaining who you are. Now, that's a challenge. Supposing a narrative, in the remaining months, supposing the Labour Party goes on with the narrative that, listen, you're poor. My brother in Newi is poor. My classmate in Bayelsa is also poor. But all of us have senators and all of that. You know, it becomes, you create a sub, um, a sub layer of solidarity of people who need to vote and all of that. That's what they need to do. Canvassing needs to take place. The rallies are good. But they also, if you look more closely, yeah. is the voting population, but also slightly elitist. Mm. And therefore, let all, all those who are holding rallies in Abuja, they have villages. When last did they go home? Which of their cousins do they know by name? <laughs> so that's the reality. So right. if we say it's Labour, and I'll um, be done in 30 seconds. If you say it's Labour Party, Labour is all over the country. Let them deploy it. We've done it. I've done it before in a private program. Run a program for a state from each ward in this, from each of the towns, there were 177 towns, 20 youths. So when it was time for an election in that state, we didn't go for a car I said, listen, all of you have houses near, have polling booths near your house. Monitor from there, send a text message every hour to our control room. Labor Party can do a lot. This, the other parties can do the same. Right. Yes. <coughs> this is, these are the cards on the table that somebody has to emerge as president okay. who will who should give us a better nation. That's a brilliant thesis there. And um, Tope, we've got about two minutes left. Um, oh, really? I'm going to give the final word to you. What about the other main political parties? He touched on that briefly. How do you assess their own response to Nigeria's upheavals and what we're likely to see with them when it comes to the elections? 
Um, well, for, for PDP, I'm afraid they've been a little bit enmeshed in some of these internal crises, unfortunately. For yeah, but the APC is a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but the APC well, is also well, you know, enmeshed in, you know, in I mean, problems and, as well. And, and it's just the wrong time to be like that. <laughs> yeah, that part, yeah. Um, <laughs> it, 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 the APC equally, you know, but I think they're, I think they're managing it a little bit better. And, and you know, and the, the points, man, even mm -hmm. though, um, you know, people are saying, where is he now? You know, and perhaps he's going to appear. I saw a picture I just... Uh, shared on Facebook now uh, of him looking dapper wearing suit somewhere, you know. Um, one of the problems in the APC is that I heard that the the chairman is saying uh, maybe he wasn't carried along in forming the 422 the man team. Now everybody wants to be on the team. So if if what I know about uh, Bolatinubu is it remains, um, he is 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 a, a, a go getter. So he's going to drive that process. And the party will have to follow in tow mm -hmm. because he's also been in that party for so long and all of that stuff, you know. So um, now, but what we also want, um, th there isn't any document um, around, like two, about one or two documents have come out which they've asked to step down because right. it wasn't, they need to think around stuff properly. And so I'm hoping that the final document that will come out will address all of these issues on ground. For them, it's a little bit more difficult. But I'll, I'll tell you one of the reasons very, very why briefly. I surprised them very, seconds. very briefly. Right. For for them, you know, people will say, well, the APC has, you know, kind of they haven't done too well. Why is anybody supporting them? But for me, I think that pragmatically. We can't afford another long transition period. We can't afford another government that will come and for the next four years you're telling us how those other guys are bad. We want someone who will come and hit the ground running, no excuses, because you can't have an excuse and say well, your party and is it was the bad. APC that yes, you know, you can't come and tell us stories. <laughs> no, but that's, in fact, the no, truth is, right. that is how it has to okay. be. No, no. Well, I'm going to have just, to leave it yeah, there. Just I, put the ball on the ground and yeah. kick it. You know, we want. But I have to say, it. getting both of you was just absolutely brilliant. And listening to your analysis, I want to thank you very much indeed, Tope Fashua, who is an economist, public policy scholar, and of course, uh, Professor Oke Ikechuku, who is a professor of strategic management and human capital development, executive director of Development Specs Academy, and member of the editorial board of this day newspaper. Thank you very much indeed. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye bye and thank you for watching.